Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we are back in automation with the development version of Light Campaign V4.2. And what I'm going to do here in the uh, following few little videos is testing the campaign and just um, seeing where things are and how they can be improved. Being try or deliberately trying to be very critical of it and see how the AI does, what is happening and if there are things that can be improved before the official launch. And what you're probably going to see is me um, trying out a few different things, like different campaign starts, trying to generate a few cars and really critiquing what the AI does, and then uh, checking my lookup tables and everything to make sure that everything is in order or gets improved. All right, should we jump into it? I think so. So let's start a new game and of course what we really need to do is to start with something um, that is a little harder, like insane probably, just to see how it plays. This is exactly 300 of a multiplier too low in terms of score multiplier, that's the biggest bug in the game because uh, this ought to be the elite multiplier. But uh, anyway, let's uh, Kup Kupferberg Group. Very good. Yes. It chose an appropriate name. And of course, the uh, Kupferberg is a uh, little, it's not even a mountain. It's a, it's a hill that is uh, east of Vilborg in the automation universe. So uh, I think we're going in here and just check out what we have. Oh, yeah, I can, I can show you. Where, where is it? Uh, do we get... There's the Kupferberg. Yep, there you have it. So what do we have in here for our settings? Competition is at 100%. That's good, because I really want to check out how competent the competition is. And they are naturally gated by where the other companies are starting. But that is always the same. It is a preset bunch of companies that always exist in this universe. And then um, their cars are chosen from a pool of cars they can have, and they these companies all have their individual characters. That has been the case for, I think, since 4.1, but, uh, or even 4.0. But yes, are we happy with this one? Just a small plot? Yeah, I think so. Depending on what we want to start with. But anyway, I think that's uh, probably a fair amount there. What, I, what I'm a little curious about are these hiccups. Like, every few seconds, there's... Come on, next tick up. Where is it? There. Did you see that stutter? That is really odd. There could be something like garbage collection coming by. I know it sounds weird, but that is like the the proper term for terminology for the game cleaning up its memory. <laughs> and it shouldn't be locking you out like this in terms of frame rate. That's weird. But yeah, I'm uh, happy with this start. So... Um, Kupferberg Group, start a new project. We are starting in, oh, we're starting in Nelfesia. No, in uh, Gasmir, yes. Uh, it's a Gasmian start, of course, Kupferberg. And what could we do? Let's start with something odd. Like something that I've probably never really done. <laughs> See if that works, because I'm usually always starting out with the premium market or luxury or maybe family premium if I want to start out larger. How about off-road? And how about we generate an AI car and just see what it does? Because this should give us a hint of how competent the competitors are for this as well. Let's see if it completely messes up or <laughs> if it can can provide... Oh, oh, that's already looking pretty solid. Uh, look at that off-road rating. <laughs> that's impressive. And it definitely hit the category. I would say that... Ooh, there might not be a proper uh, competitor, off pure off-road competitor there in these early years. So we might have found a niche here. That's neat. Whoa, that's a lot of power for that early on. How heavy is this car? Um, where, where did we have that? That is blah, blah, blah. Um, no, okay. Um, here, testing page. And there, okay. It's 1.6 tons. Holy! What? Alright, that's heavy. What did it build? Let's check it out. Oh, okay. It's a big one. It's a big one. But I do see some potential synergies. 
with the body choice that it has given us. And I think that's um, probably an interesting start. Just uh, start out by doing some utility and uh, off-road vehicles. Cool. So what choices have you given me? Ladder, steel. Steel is not, not available because that requires uh, a medium-sized factory. We don't have that. We can't afford it. Also, galvanization plant. Nope. 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 But coil. Yeah, fair enough. We can run both uh, off-road vehicles and utility vehicles on coil if we wanted to. Always will give you a massive ride height to have that in the front. Because it's solid axle in the front, but that's, I guess it's fine. Should be very quick to engineer. Now maybe that's what we, what we ought to shoot for. And of course aluminium here, yes. That makes the car a little lighter. When I say a little, that's 100, uh, 110 kilos roughly. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, how about the engine that it built? An inline six, 3.5 liter. Whoa, that's a massive stroke. But push rod, yeah, I guess. Zero quality there, it's fine. Th those settings are looking good. Let's see the four-way split graph. That is a decent tune. That is really not that bad. Um, okay, I like it. I like it. It does strangle it a bit due to the um, undersquare design it shows. As in the... Um, the top end flow there is a little choked up here, but it did choose a very low uh, top RPM there. That's fine, perfectly valid. And we go to this, so heavy duty and harmonic damp. It really needs all of those, yes. But then, ah, yeah, this is one thing that it doesn't do yet, and I've already just submitted the, um, the ticket for that to be implemented. It's the AI currently doesn't know about the slider and always leaves it at 50. So that's some missed opportunity. Let's see how much of a difference that actually makes. So we go. You what? Okay. <laughs> well, I guess. I guess you can. <laughs> Those tiny wheels. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it works, but it's probably not the best. Um, what I wanted to see is how much difference that makes. So. Uh, how do we best do that? Um, probably by just screenshotting this. <laughs> what it should be doing, of course, is that once I make the change in here in the engine and I come back, it should like, color these items. Let's see if it does that. So I'm just going to change what we talked about here. And I think this one should have, because it's an off-road utility vehicle, something like that, it should have pretty high balancing mass because that makes it easier to uh, to, to not stall it. Uh, it makes it very heavy but something like this 90 yeah yeah let's see what does it do um, and it did not mark those but the values have changed so let me brush just bring up my ah yeah okay I can put them next to each other of course you don't see those we have lost some drivability. We have lost some uh, comfort. But what has increased? Oh, we have gained some off-road. That's good. And we have gained utility as well. Nah, uh, so not a major change. So I'm actually not sure if this is worth it because it's going to make the car heavy, quite a bit heavier overall. Well, let's go 75 instead. Uh, let's check out the other options. Wow, that's a lot of compression. I think it might be running on 98. Yeah, it is. All right, well, use that. Uh, if we check the availability, you see that both in in our regions where we do sell, that is Gasmia and Hedvesia, 98 is readily available and increasing in coverage, so perfectly fine. Now checking, that is all looking good. The gearing could be slightly higher, okay, because this is getting up to 3000 RPM in fourth. Still fine, I guess, but 17 liters, no, 18 liters, I think it was, on to 100 kilometers is slightly garbage. Uh, our carb tuning is good, and it's about right where, it's, where it ought to be. And running pretty lean, yeah, that's fair. No, oh, margin. Um, that is one thing that it should be doing. That is something that I need to note down. Because what does this do? Well, it does give you some uh, 
uh, so it lowers the octane that you're actually using, gives you a bit of a buffer there for bad batches of fuel and environmental conditions that are not favorable and so on. You're not going to lose much here, but you are going to gain some uh, little, let's see, how much are you going to gain here? Not much, there you lose a lot. Here you've gained a slight amount, something like this. I think that's, that's reasonable, plus three. Do we really want to start out with a plus one here? Hmm, I'm, it might be worth it just for the reliability. Yeah, yeah I think it is. It shows cast low and uh, standard low. That's a good combination for something that is this low revving. Everything else for sizing looks good. One baffled. Yeah, it's nice and cheap. Um, but otherwise, I think it's good. That was a good engine build. So, yeah. Solid. Okay, spacing 100 is fine. Hmm. What is... Oh, that's something I need to check. What is the throttle response? Basically negligible. <laughs> and that's because we chose some eco carbs. Those SU carbs are not the best in throttle response. Do we want to have an overdrive gear? Do they even care about fuel economy? Um, Off-road budget does 7.4%. 4.8% by off-road. So we could. Oh, I still have it in miles per hour. Well, that's weird. 17.2 liters, if we go all the way like this, 16.2. Still garbage overall, but uh, I think the uh, lowest gear is still low enough. And that moves. Wow, fourth gear there for the highest speed setting. Moves it really high up there. That's nice, into the green area, super efficient. Let's check out our detailed stats and fuel economy just to see. Cruise tests, oh, ow. <laughs> this thing is not the most aerodynamic. It did go for longitudinal 4x4, of course, that's that's a good choice. Manual locker, very good. Uh, All-terrain tires, so we could go even harder. I think for this one, we're going to go all off-road. So there we have that. It's own, ooh, steering, does it? know about steering it did okay manual recirculating ball that's the correct choice for this early on if you chose that one you <laughs> yeah yeah ouch <laughs> that wouldn't be great would it but slowly the puzzle is coming together drivability is garbage but well, i think chunky off-road tires while more expensive are quite beneficial in this situation let's go with slightly larger ones even and then we do want to get the correct steering behavior. Uh, let's do that now. That is very close. I like it. Then for the um, for the other vehicles that we're going to make, we can choose utility tires instead because they are aimed at the utility market. So that's looking good. This is also looking pretty solid, although I would doubt the... Oh my god utility front that is nasty and this is already with 60 pad type yeah ouch so something like this gives us uh, ever so slightly higher uh, drivability sacrifices some amounts of utility which we are going to get back for the other trims that we are making for this one uh, pad type all looking solid that's fine that's fine off-road skid tray good choice uh, even more airflow, I would go for my more airflow just to get some additional reliability there. Yeah, just little bits, 80, maybe even 90. On the inside, bench and then nothing. Mm-hmm, premium? Really? Should we go for premium? Affordability, hmm. We might want to shoot a little lower with this one. So save shave 500 bucks off of this one just for material costs that is good yeah let's do the standard and then are we going for none that's just 300 bucks nukes absolutely nukes the prestige and the comfort so no i think we have to go with the premium standard safety all good optimized weight do we want to go slightly heavier mm, yeah Maybe. 
Uh, some additional comfort. How much comfort are they valuing? 13%? That's the highest base stat. So, yeah. Let's go slightly heavier. And the rest seems to be fine. Although, I would want to try... Oh my god, no, we can't. We can't at this right height, can we? That's just wobbly as fuck. Uh, like 11. That would be optimal, of course, for the off-road to not have any sway bars. It removes them at that point. Um, but we can't. <laughs> this is too wobbly, sorry. No camber adjustments for solid axle there. And this ride height, yeah, I don't know. Seems okay. Now, let's check out if we can go for slightly larger tires. That will be very expensive. Let's keep an eye on that. So this is 416. Oh, 750 is the maximum for this. Mm, and these are 110s. Okay, let's up the size to 17s. That gives us some more leeway for the brakes at the front, which is good to reduce the... Um, just the brake fade there. That's better. Okay, I like where this is going. Overall, pretty good build by the AI. Like, the general direction was correct. Um, but, oh yeah, here, mm, yeah, mm. roll angle pretty high still, uh, 99.4 though, that's all good, and this is solid, yep, okay, I think that's uh, all we needed, 1,520, that's a big off-roader, so we call it the off-road, ooh, that's a very high score, I think that's just because we don't have any direct competition at the moment, that might very well appear in, when the car gets out. Now, let's make a utility. Change of body to this one. Mm, yeah, uh, enable the morphing. We do want to have maximum utility. Just move that ahead. Yep, yep, perfect. A uh, little comfortable. Yeah, sure. Oh, this is green. <laughs> very green, but not too far off. Ah, there it is, very far off. 480, so maybe there are no heavy utility vehicles on the market at the moment. No dedicated ones, at least. We're going for utility vehicle tires. That is dropping down the price slightly and just improving... Uh, well, it, it nuked off-road. It did improve... Well, where's utility? It didn't improve utility. But drivability is a lot better. That's good. Maybe we should... Also lower the vehicle slightly. 500 is probably still enough. We're going to keep the differential and the uh, the 4x4 because we have to engineer it anyway. They can just leave it in rear-wheel drive mode for all it's worth. So, yep, that's fine. No open diff there. And utility tires, that's good. Same tire size, it's fine. Uh, brakes. Ooh, we need some more brake force. Off-road skid tray, now well, I would say we go for none. Interior we keep the same, it's a two-seater now. And then... <laughs> no, I'm not going to put a manual rack and pinion on there. Uh, that is all also the same. How much do they value? Oh, we should change the target demographic. And they are the desired body type, ute. Current body type, pickup. <laughs> oh well, okay. You want to complain about that with 0%? That is not a lot of load it can take. That is crap. Let's fix that up. So that, that is, of course, not generated by the AI. Uh, I have to fix that myself. That should... Oh, yes. Look at that come alive. Um, the utility there. Yeah, that's pretty solid. So now that might have been a little too much. But something like this, dampers need to come up as well. So, yes. Uh, now we can reduce the sway bars again. Yeah, looking better. Maybe I do want to go stiffer. Because I do have the load capacity there. It's just those springs are not quite there. And you see it's continuing to increase. Yeah, I'm good. Alright, uh, let's leave it at this. I haven't forgotten anything, have I? Let's check it out. Yeah, looks about right. Okay, cool. Um, there, sign it off. And now we do a delivery. Yeah, 
big ass van. Also utility tires on there, this is all still looking pretty solid apart from the massive brake fade that we have. Two seater and all still looking good. I think that's just to, oh yeah, heavy delivery. This is that Talmud demographic and you can see all these three are green. That means ooh, with massive normalized desirability. Maybe a bit too much. Does that mean it's also not having a, any delivery vehicles in this market? Very mi well might be that they are coming within the first few months. That might be something to note down and just check that that is actually the case. Cool, very, very high desirabilities on all of these, but I would assume that they are dropping off a cliff as soon as proper competitors come out. Now we need to set up production. And what do we have there? This is looking very good already. And I think I want to just have the, co no, don't have the cost of opportunity by um, lowering the tooling which makes it the car come out so much faster. Um, so what we can do, we do have 100 million. This isn't going to be a massively expensive project, but uh, that doesn't do enough. Um, work faster, please. So within the first four months, we are going to release this thing, or uh, five months is fine. Yeah, let's do five. And it's not going to cost us much. Looks solid, let's set up the engine. That is 11 months still, so let's lower that down to. We have that going, and there, five, okay. This is so handy, by the way, that you can see what you had up there, in case you forgot. Now for car factory. Well, <laughs> you have to do it by contract, so I hope this is going to be cheap. Yeah, Gazmir is the one to choose here. Contract, small, Iron Foundry, otherwise costs us 40 million, here nothing. But the disadvantage of having a contract factory is that you pay double labor cost and double material cost. So this thing, whoa, no, this is super expensive. 7,000 per engine, ouch. Yeah, holy, oh no, <laughs> that's pretty bad. Mmm, that's like half the car cost, isn't it? But we don't have much choice there. And we call it the lazy boy. Yeah, that, that's that's adequate. Uh, that one can't be produced. Yeah, exactly. We need to set up a factory and shall do so right away. We don't have anything here just yet. It's trees. Nature, so pretty. Small factory, small two, I think would be appropriate. Small three goes slightly above production capacity. Um, well, not, not really. We can always just run one and a half shifts or something, but I think we're lowballing it a little. Let's uh, start out with a uh, level two. That's just 11 million. That's good. Uh, testing, ah, nah, that's, that's too much. Way too much cash. Okay, we have those set up. Only ma no mass production is aluminum panels. Should still be fine. Uh, minimum shifts, maximum shifts, let's lower that down. And let's up that because we do want to reduce those costs. Worker wages, worker quality. Um, that's still fine. Two months until two and a half shifts. It's good, we're in Gazmir, so there are plenty of people who can go out here. Uh, and then wages, no, we don't need to increase that, that's fine. And then we do want to have, well, yeah, still decent profits there in these target categories. Looking good. So it's a good setup, that's a nice number to see. We need to check out if the automation is too low or too high. No, this is pretty solid. It's reducing, as we increase the automation, it is reducing the efficiency, but also we have a higher throughput, which offsets that up to a point, and it nets us higher profits, which, of course, 
are counterweighed by the increase in cost here, but it is not costing that much. As you see, the major and minor tooling costs are not shooting up massively just yet. Tooling quality, I want to push that higher. That is making it somewhat more expensive. And QA threshold will slow it down, but we do need the quality uh, just to kick up our reputation. Now, I'm happy with the factory setup. Forecaster. Ooh. <laughs> well, not so good. But, on the other hand, this is not looking too smart either. I think we're shooting for something like 30-ish percent markup. Maybe we can't even go that high. Huh. Yeah. This one sure doesn't have much of a... Uh, of the throughput, 361 per, per year. Most of them are going to be the delivery. Do we have to lower this one? No, it doesn't even help. Maybe the market is just tiny. But I do think we need to have this kind of setup. It's just so damn expensive to have them built by a contract factory. But not much we can do about it. Let's hope for the best. The best business strategy ever. Those numbers are not encouraging, especially uh, taking into account that the forecaster nowadays is a lot improved compared to what it was before. So, yeah, a little dire looking. Let's see if it works. We still need to do marketing and everything, and we're not going to take a loan because that's just 17 million. Um, uh, sign off the project. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yes. Now, very importantly, my well, build quality is nice. Um, very importantly. We need to keep an eye on these numbers, because uh, if they drop below, let's say, 150 all of a sudden from high values, that just means a competitor has come out. I still think these are probably in the 120 region, like a little bit more optimized than what the competition can do, but uh, should be... Yeah, these... Oh, it's just too high. They're too expensive. But we are also in a recession at the moment. And that, that's not going to change in four months. <laughs> um, we are shafted. Um, also, marketing can only do so much in four months. We can market to some niche categories, though. And that would be off-road. Um, there. 4,000, 8,000, 17,000, 34,000. And that's a big gain there. And then utility. So there, there. Uh, 50, 70, yeah. Let's let's do something like this. What more do we want? Oh, I know. Um, we do want to target a cargo volume. There. That will be nice. So that doesn't cost much, but look at the effect down there. That's nice. 180k. Probably worth it. Can go for one drive. Ah, oh, no. That's very expensive for just one but it affects almost everything in here. Reliability marketing there. Hmm. Overall, I think this is pretty solid. So that is a total of um, uh, 250K per month. Oof, yeah, expensive. Got to sell that many cars first. And in terms of research, got to start that too. Let's head in here. What do we want? Could start off by... Uh, Reliability really is a big factor for all those vehicles if we go down that route. And reliability is very much connected to the fuel system. Also, fuel efficiency, of course, that, that helps. So in general, I think this is a pretty powerful one. I need to consider that we probably want to weigh these costs for those, like costs per point of research, and really adjust that for every category, depending on how powerful they are. That's a great way to balance. Because now that en engine architecture or engine family tech pool is so unbelievably valuable, like it's super powerful, it just makes everything so much better, this is super OP at that cost. And I think a way of doing that is increasing the point cost for the individual ones, but leaving the lab cost per point constant for everything. I think that's a fair compromise. So now, to wrap up this episode, we have prepared ourselves 
We have set up everything with our engine factory that is being built there. Just starting to be built on the second month. Uh, and then it's finished in, uh, we said five months, right? That's looking good. So not much wait time. Let's see if the re economy recovers or takes a second dip. Was it a dead cat bounce or not? We do have some revenue. Interest payments. Oh, that's nice. Thank you very much. That covers uh, our, almost our marketing in Gazmir. And off-road is already starting to sell. We're not going to give it many months to accumulate sales of, or pre-orders. Oh, and now the big factory costs are coming in. Ooh, ow, ow, ay, ay, why, 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 why. Yeah, ouch. But pre-sales are increasing as well. Is that looking good? Not yet. But the oh, economy's upturn. Yes. Uh, problem being, the regions that we are in are down there. <laughs> they are the worst. Ah, that almost a 10% per annum downturn there. That's nasty. All right, final month. And plop. There you go. It has been released. And how are things looking? We are at full production. Very good. Staff employed 100%. And now, uh huh, months worth of production in of stock. Minus one. Perfect. And that's neat. They are very happy though. Dealership happiness is good. So we're going to push our... Oh. Oh, nice! Oh, that's new! Holy shit, that's new! I didn't even know that was put in. That's cool, yeah. Um, proper sales graph for the individual trims. Nice. Our only problem here <laughs> is that our pricing is too high. So uh, let's run it in another month and see what, what happens. And then we're done here. There, boom! We're making profit. And that is what I wanted to see. But no, no, we're not really. <laughs> we're not really. Because we just reduced the pre-order pre-orders by 0.6 stock months. So that means we only sold um how much? 0.4. No, we only um well <laughs> we only can sell roughly 0.4 production months of uh, stock each month. That is bad if you have locked in your factory that high. That does not bode well. But what we can do is we go into facelifting early and then stop production, have it facelift and do everything right there to um, make the production a bit more efficient and all, lower the price, have stock accumulated to cover us there and, well, then just continue on with a better and slightly cheaper model. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. We shall continue this playthrough in air quotes uh, in the next episode and maybe the next one after that, just to see how it goes if we discover any flaws in this, or which is very likely, bugs and so on, and just see how it goes. All right, hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time.